Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sabrina Kofer, and on behalf of Choice and ACRL, I'd like to welcome you to today's program, uh, Cutting Edge Solutions, Moving Libraries Forward in the Digital Age, which is sponsored by Ex Libris, a ProQuest company. Uh, today's discussion is one in a series of sponsored webinars from Choice and ACRL that addresses new ideas and developments of interest to the academic library community. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to point out just a few features of the webinar software. Uh, all of the attendees who join the presentation are automatically muted and your cameras are off, so no need to worry about generating any noise or feedback. We've got that taken care of. Uh, in the main area of the screen, you can follow along with the presentation materials. Uh, we're using the Q&A feature today. Uh, please use it to ask questions of our presenters. Uh, we do expect many questions and we likely will not have time to get to all of them, so we apologize in advance for that. Uh, but that being said, we'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. So please do type your questions into the Q&A module as they occur to you. Uh, also note that there is closed captioning available for today's session. To toggle the automated captions on or off, please use the CC button on the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, also note that we're recording today's program and everyone who registered should receive a follow-up email with a link to the archive version. And with that, we're ready to get started. So I will pass things over to Mike. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Sabrina. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. I'm Mike Richens, Director of Product Management at Ex Libris, and I want to note my sincere appreciation of your attendance today and hope we can provide you with information that will prove to be interesting and useful in your own practice and work environments. I also want to thank ACRL and Choice for working with us to schedule these events. So joining me today are two great colleagues, Greg and Judith. I'm excited to be presenting alongside with them both. Uh, they both have extensive experience and knowledge on the topics we are covering today. So I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves. Uh, maybe over to Greg first. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Greg. I'm Associate Director for Access and Digital Services at University of St. Thomas in uh, St. Paul in Minneapolis here in Minnesota. And hi everyone. My name is uh, Judith Frankel. I'm Director of Product Management at Ex Libris. Thank you for having us today. All right, thank you both. So here's what we have planned for today. If we can move to the agenda slide. To kick us off, Greg, our guest speaker, will present on the topic at hand, discussing how St. Thomas is moving forward in the digital age through a number of user-focused services supported by a variety of technologies. Next, we'll have an open discussion on an exciting and critical topic, the future of library resource sharing. The, we will then shift focus to another topic that has generated a lot of interest in discussion as of late, controlled digital lending. Finally, we'll end on Q&A. So please ask questions over the course of the presentation through the Q&A box, and we'll do our best to answer either during the presentation or in the Q&A section. I also want to note that sometime after today's session, you will receive an email from me with a link to the recording, which will be posted on the Ex Libris YouTube page. So before I hand it over to Greg, just a few comments from me on today's discussions in relation to the experiences I've had working in and with libraries over the past 20 years, and especially over the past two years. So how we provide services to our users is more important than ever. There's an increasingly vast and rich set of collections held by libraries around the world, and access to these collections is critical. There are hurdles, old and new, around getting materials into the hands of our users, including staffing, budgets, staff workflows, issues with techno technologies, and integration between the platforms we use. As we all know, library users are used to on-demand and quick access to products through commercial services, and there could be a gap between these services and their experiences using the library. Library solutions and technologies should help us meet these expectations both for our users and for library staff. Our users' experiences should be transparent and intuitive with better visibility into all aspects of the services we provide. Staff workflows should be efficient and easily customizable with intuitive user interfaces facilitating an engaging environment where staff can focus on the tasks and processes that are key to maintaining excellent service. Looking to the future, it is key to be connected as a library community in new ways, leveraging new approaches and technologies to provide and maintain access in a way that is cost and staff time effective. And it is evident through my discussions with libraries, consortia, other partners and stakeholders that we have an incredible opportunity as a community to transform our services in wonderful and meaningful ways. And so on that note, I would like to pass the session over to Greg Argo. Thanks so much. 
Thanks, Mike. I'm going to get control here and start moving the slides. OK, so I've already introduced myself. You know who I am. Um, we're talking about cutting edge solutions, moving libraries forward in the digital age. Um, what does that mean to me? So a few things I thought of were collaborating across physical distances quickly. Uh, this is both in something like managing requests in, in a Rapido, but also doing things like collaborating with a professor on our Rome campus to push out a reading list ASAP via Leganto. Um, it, he was struck out with the bookstore, but we were able to take care of that real quickly for him with our cool tools. Um, increasing delivery speed and serving with attention to the attention economy. So we're paying attention to how much attention people are paying to us. Um, you got to be quick and clear and easy. Uh, removing friction from interfaces and processes as much as possible. Also increasing transparency in services and meeting expectations, largely driven by experiences people are having with e-commerce e sites um, and being where users are. Um, and to borrow a business term, uh, by doing so, achieving a lower cost to acquire customers. Um, moving on from that, we've got embracing open systems, uh, building personalization and dynamic context specific web services from APIs. We'll look at some examples in a minute. Um, also on um, being where users already are, um, integrating with library man or learning management systems, sorry, and collaborating on course delivery processes. Um, and then one of the most basic elements, but not to be forgotten about moving forward digitally is actually digitizing things. So uh, digitizing our analog collections for services. And finally, something I didn't put on the slide, but sometimes you move to move forward, you need to make some changes to systems. So being willing to migrate, having openness and flexibility is a necessity. Um, and uh, this is just a slide showing you what I just talked about. And I can see connections between the, a lot of these uh, Ex Libris products products that we've been using, Rapido, Leganto, Primo, Alma, Developers Network. Um, we're making good use of these tools, and I hope to show you um, how we're doing that. So uh, the next slide is going to delve into uh, digitizing analog collections. So maybe it's just me, but uh, still when I hear about digitizing uh, analog collections, I think of a student employee in archives scanning age manuscripts and blowing dust off of documents. Um, here, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about digitizing analog collections with speed on demand to meet the immediate needs of users. Um, we're looking here is uh, some request options that my users can see in Primo. So in Primo, we've got digitization requests set up for our own materials. Um, and then we also have a Rapido offer here at the bottom. Uh, so Rapido is the engine for the physical loan offers, which you'll see on the left side of the screen, uh, get a physical copy. Uh, while Rapid ILL is integrated into Alma and provides the engine for digital offers of uh, chapters and articles, which you'll see over on the right side here. Um, I will talk more about Rapido offers later on. Um, looking at Leganto now, um, this is the Leganto reading list functionality for course materials that we use. Um, here we're looking at searching for a library's resources to add an item, and in this case, a physical copy of the book Moon Palace from the library's holdings. Sorry, I've got a little bit of lag on my slides. <laughs> um, let me check on back and forth. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, this is the next screen in the workflow. So this is a Leganto questions screen where, um, as you can see, the workflow prompts faculty to tag the item with what they actually want done to it. Um, and here we are, they're requesting to digitize a fair use portion. Um, this is the Leganto tag screen. So you can see once they answer the question, it automatically adds a tag to um, digitize one chapter. They also have options to add more tags manually. For instance, perhaps, Perhaps this professor wants to supply a personal copy to the circulation desk that's different than the copy we have or something like that or any of these things they can uh, request from us. And then um, the digitization request is pushed through in Alma from the reading list citation after staff review and approve the request. Uh, when working on lists, it's not uncommon to have student employees uh, pick up and complete these requests in an hour or two. Faculty realize this flexibility and speed is unrivaled and no offense to the campus bookstore.
Okay. Um, on to embracing open systems, um, AKA, if they come, you will build it. Uh, you're probably familiar with the, with the mantra, if you build it, they will come. Well, in our digital services department, we don't necessarily believe that's true for library properties. Um, instead, are inspired by rearranging the words to, if they come, you will build it. Um, so customer experience councils with students uh, let us know that they thought that uh, we would be more effective if we could place library content in places students and faculty inhabit every day, like the Canvas LMS um, and the university portal. So uh, we got to know the developers network, particularly our web developer, Chad, and built this personalization into our university portal. Um, when the student or faculty member comes to the library page in the portal, they see their library activity called via APIs into Alma and displayed uh, dynamically. That's because uh, in the portal, we know that who's logged in and you know, we can start uh, doing processes with our application to pull exactly the relevant info. Um, so you can see here, uh, the request loans and fines and fees information is coming from Alma. And, uh, we made use of the developers network for that. Um, and then uh, at the bottom, if we expand one of the courses in the My Course Resources section, we pull in this content dynamically with SpringShare APIs to give students very relevant starting points to the research and awareness of their subject librarians that semester. Um, along with um, using the APIs to build things, we also wanna be in Canvas and, and participating in course delivery. So this is more if they come, you will build it territory. Um, and it also has been a good reason for us to partner with instructional designers on uh, course delivery of library content services. Um, so this is library help. We actually developed this before the personalization feeds. This is an application, of uh, LTI application actually in Canvas we built and it dynamically provides relevant starting points um, like you saw earlier and also pulls in readings, uh, of course readings, a different view of them in all, from Alma in addition to the SpringShare LibGuides account. You can see the resource list uh, stuff at the bottom there. Uh, this was adopted into the default campus course template during the switch to online in the spring of 2020 and um, has gotten our uh, librarians quite a bit of exposure. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, thankfully Ex Libris built Leganto. We didn't build this uh, and it, it integrates directly into Canvas courses. Uh, we market it only within Canvas instead of using the standalone interface, uh, which has necessitated the collaboration with instructional designers, which itself has uh, the relationship there has led to a better position for our libraries in teaching and learning. Um, you can see a few of the different kinds of content you can deliver in Leganto, uh, an article link here with the access online link, and then uh, uh, that goes into our databases, and then also a digitized file here, which can be downloaded or viewed uh, directly in Leganto. The last piece on Leganto is on student savings. This is a page from our annual report showing how much Leganto adoption by faculty has saved our students and demonstrates the impact we're having. Of course, student savings are important, but even more important is uh, what it actually leads to, which is removing a barrier to reading. And it makes students uh, more likely to be engaged with their course content if they don't have to pay for it. Okay, so now I'm moving on to increasing delivery speed and attention to attention. Um, this is where I'm going to go into talking more about Rapido. Uh, this is about being user centered and understanding the processes need to be quick and easy or they'll be abandoned. Um, so with focusing on Rapido here, I'm going to provide a deeper understanding of the problems we think Rapido solves and its impact on our users and staff. So if we look back a year or two at the position of ILL service at St. Thomas, um, we had a really good reputation and we still do, uh, but we thought it could be even better than people imagined. So we were glad to see uh, movement in the resource sharing market. Um, we were really interested in seeing what was available. Um, looking at our service, it, we felt it was a bit separate, like it's a last chance bolt-on service, not the, that greatly integrated into the researcher's flow. It's a separate system and account uh, outside of the main library system for the uh, researcher to deal with. The discovery usually happens elsewhere. That stitching together systems can increase fail points. Uh, demand is kind of handled by other libraries by default without taking advantage of other services that we may have in the, uh, the system. And 
just having confusing request options in discovery. Our consortium really suffered from that for a number of years. Um, so you can see the roadblocks to researchers here also are, you know, like we had a discovery default search that was limited to only owned and subscribed materials. Uh, we had an expanded search that only included electronic materials. That's not great for all disciplines. Uh, we had user interface issues and inconsistent user, user experience, which turns our users away from us, and a lack of transparency and, tra uh, and tracking and borrowing process, which make researching uh, process more mysterious for our researchers. Um, so if we look at the previous system, uh, our UX discovery and staff like I said, we have multiple accounts, limited discovery, staff silos with task switching uh, between systems, duplicate processes like um, digitization or picking from shelf in different systems. We had a lack of integration and agility with other library system modules um, because we were in separate systems. Uh, we want to ask ourselves, how do we color in more of the circle for our users and staff? Um, our, some of our staff were in the purple. Uh, working on the back end and some of them were in the gray and with users when they were in our discovery they're in the purple but they have other needs outside of our what our discovery was at that time so um, they were dealing with uh, finding some stuff in the library and other stuff elsewhere so sitting down and, and looking about what we want in our future system um, an open platform utilizing more current technologies we wanted to leverage data like apis and communication standards. And we also, you know, just had a desire to push the envelope and show support for um, increased investment in updated software by a, a different vendor. Uh, as far as automation goes, you know, we want more automation to remove guesswork and wait time, increase the number of unmediated requests while reducing the processing time to get materials to patrons faster. Um, the engine, which leverages holdings and real time availability data on items. Um, this is what the automation relies on. Um, improved resource sharing options now in Primo uh, for, and, and they're providing information for users, which is not normally provided by ILL systems, um, things like delivery time and uh, um, length of loan. And just kind of a point that the better integration of resource uh, sharing into user research flows and staff operations puts ILL on a more equal footing with other services and uh, connects various departments in the back end. Uh, with the UX, um, like we, I think I've said this enough already probably, but the UX reflecting current fulfillment expectations, availability tracking and sourcing. Uh, we actually consider Rapido a discovery product as much as we do a, a resource sharing product. It's been a big improvement to our user interface and uh, our user experience and is part of our effort to provide more relevant flow of information to our users. And then finally, the tighter integration. This is about uh, existing, leveraging the existing work already done in the system. For example, the fulfillment config, the, our definitive holdings are there, our patron load and so on. And the idea that if we aren't duplicating backend work in multiple systems, we can spend more time making improvements to our service in one system. So now we're going to look a little bit deeper at the Rapido interface. Uh, so we're development partners for this over um, the last couple of years. This is a search in our default scope in Primo for a particular known item. Uh, you can see in the results list, it's not showing up at the top there. Uh, with Rapido um, up here above the search results, you'll see didn't find what you're looking for. Click here to expand your search. That's an easy way for the user to go ahead and um, expand the search to the Rapido index. Uh, so this is a view of the Rapido index and you can see the book there is right at the top. It says get it for me from other libraries. Um, so Rapido, um, where am I here? Oh yeah, I wanted to show that you've uh, got an increased results here too. So I had a note to myself to push back for a second. 480 results here, and when you go over to Rapido, you get 825. And you can imagine um, if you're actually doing a keyword search, the impact that that would have. And obviously, it has had a good impact with the known item search. Um, we include the entire CDI now, whereas before we had only selected collections. Uh, so we only had selected collections uh, when expanding discovery beyond our library. Uh, Rapido also includes print materials from lenders in your Rapido pods 
And this ties discovery together with fulfillment into one se seamless research activity. Uh, this is what we call an offer uh, in Rapido. This, the Rapido offer build off real time availability. So Rapido checks both holdings and item availability before it provides the best offer to your patron according to the terms you've configured. This offer is connected to one lender's real item, which is really available. No more sending out strings and waiting to see if they're connecting. Um, both a loan and a chapter digitization option display for physical books. And like I said earlier, the left one is handled by the Rapido engine and the right one by Rapid ILL engine. This is a view of my account and fulfillment transparency we've achieved. Uh, you see here the order tracking, it's not too dissimilar from what you might see on FedEx or something along those lines. Also, we've got one account now for accessing ILL non-returnables, no more digging around in inboxes or logging into another service to try to find that PDF you requested a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there's a pretty easy configuration in Rapido. Um, utilizes the existing Alma resource sharing configuration and infrastructure. So if you're familiar with Alma resource sharing at all, it's very much like that, just with a few extra bells and whistles. Um, there's minimal, minimal additional Rapido specific configuration that you need to complete. You need to add members, which is a uh, member is analogous to a resource sharing library. So if you are a shop with one library, you'd have probably set up one member. If you add more, you may do more depends on if you're centralized or decentralized. You wanna include participating items. These are simply uh, setting aside uh, which items you wanna lend um, as a resource sharing partner. And it's easy to mark those by location or other metadata. Uh, connect to and participate in pods. Just wanna say that um, working with pods doesn't also eliminate your current rotas. They can work in tandem. Uh, so you don't have to give up rotas if you become a, uh, a Rapido customer, and then Rapido specific borrowing policies like pod priorities, and then a default and exceptional borrowing policies. For instance, um, you could set up a different um, configuration for different user groups. Maybe uh, for faculty, you want to give them the, the offer for the longest loan, whereas for students, you want to give them the one that gets here fastest. This is the managing borrowing request screen. I'm just gonna go over some of the functionality here. Um, you can dynamically change the view with facets over on the left side. You wanna note the labels in the middle visible on each request, as well as in the facets area. Um, it's facetable uh, labels that you put on there. Uh, some of the labels on the request in the middle screen are actually automatically added because of mediation rules that you've set up, um, while others have been added manually. Um, also note the overlay at the right side of the screen that allows the staff to see more details about a request without having to click through um, into a request and without losing their place um, on the borrowing request screen itself. Um, at the top right, you maybe note this save as a new set button. You can create custom sets based on facets and labels and navigate straight to your sets from the Rapido menu um, when you get to your computer at the start of the day and when you get back to it throughout the day. Um, check your cues. Uh, these sets uh, I should mention are logical too, so they update dynamically as work is done in the system and as new requests come in. Uh, lending is quite simplified, uh, so I'm going to a lending request. I can easily go to the menu, click download electronic resource, um, be routed to our Get It screen, which will give us options for accessing, going to the database, um, download the thing, and ship the item digitally from the same menu. Uh, no having to go out to, you know, different add-ons, different systems to get your stuff. Um, and a little bit about Rapid ILL. Um, so this really helps a lot in automation. It's Rapido's engine for article and chapter requests, all integrated into Alma. Um, if you're a Rapido customer and haven't been a Rapid ILO customer before, um, all you know, all your stuff happens in Alma. You don't actually have to go into Rapid ILL. Um, what Rapid ILL brings is um, a reduction in um, things that are need mediation. So you can send requests out, and if you know the metadata is full or whatever, um, you can connect pretty quickly with. Uh, a partner and they can start turning that around. So it automatically checks your local holdings and open access first and then routes only to a partner who owns and can lend it. 
within 24 hours. Uh, so there's a 24 hour service commitment and a 12 hour average turnaround time or so. It's really easy to expose the holdings you wish to share via publishing profile in Alma. Uh, um, and one of the nice benefits, uh, uh, Rapid ILO is indexed to the year level instead of the title level. So it'll be much more accurate. Uh, there's a resource sharing directory that's uh, been a recent addition to Alma. Uh, it's a, a list of Alma institutions that do resource sharing and is available to all Alma institutions, not just rapid institutions to copy and to um, use to expand their resource sharing network. Um, any Alma institution can define their own resource sharing member and then publish to the community zone. And then any Alma institution can also go to the community zone and find members. Uh, this e eases the peer-to-peer -peer relationship setup. Um, obviously, you still need to ask the other partner if they want, want to work together. Um, but this is uh, this saves a lot of trading information back and forth to set up partners manually. Um, in addition to creating easier peer-to-peer -peer relationships, um, it's also an opportunity to facilitate reciprocal regional pods. Uh, so uh, wrapping this up, um, we have got some process changes that have come about by uh, all these changes we've had recently, um, both to our consortium and in Rapido. The pick from shelf list now organizes most access work services work for every shift. Um, Borrowing is less of a process of wait and see. We've got no more transiting of branch items to central ILL department for scanning and mailing. Um, and requests meeting certain criteria can be routed to acquisitions for purchase. On the staffing side, all access services staff now contribute to troubleshooting, digitization, and document delivery. Uh, the student workers from the CERC and ILL silos uh, merged and digitization uh, now needs to move from a specialty skill that a few students have to a score, core skill that all of our students have. And uh, we're still working on that, but um, we're better than we were a year ago. Uh, spreading responsibility among branches, I found um, all of ours, we've got four libraries here and they're all resource sharing libraries of their own. And, and they're able to uh, sustain all their own interlibrary, own, interlibrary loan materials and activities. Uh, it's easier to train and manage when all the work is in one system. And it, it feels sort of like when we went to Rapido as an extension of what we were already doing, as opposed to having a complete different system that we have to stitch together. Main CERC staff handle the buy the book requests and the ILL program managers handle difficult exceptions and advanced mediation and other administrative tasks. Uh, so where are we currently? Well, we have expanded discovery. We have an improved uh, user experience. We've been able to remove silos and access services, uh, strategically address materials budget cuts, um, and we've got increased patron confidence and satisfaction. And uh, we got the whole circle purple. So we're happy about that. And that's all I have for my presentation. Wonderful, thanks, Greg. Uh, appreciate that presentation. And everyone, uh, keep putting questions in the Q and A, and we'll we'll definitely uh, answer them. So, moving on to the second section, uh, the future of resource sharing. Uh, this discussion, I, I want to start it off first um, talking about a topic that I'm very excited about uh, for the future, and one that uh, Greg noted a couple times in his presentation, and that's Rapid ILL. And I've had a lot of discussions, we've had a lot of presentations recently around uh, controlled digital lending, uh, Rapido, and a lot of folks are like, what, what, what's going on with RapidLL? What does the future look like there? So I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about that. So one of the great things about RapidLL recently is the growth. So over the past about two years, we've added nearly 200 libraries. So we're now nearing about 550 community members uh, worldwide. Uh, a lot of libraries have leaned, obviously, heavily into resource sharing during the pandemic, and, and so we've seen a lot of libraries join Rapid Allow to help support uh, their interlibrary loan services. And a lot of growth in North America, of course, but we've also added some libraries in Latin America, a lot of libraries in Europe, including a large and growing group in the UK, uh, the Middle East, and uh, libraries in Asia Pacific. So a lot of new libraries have joined the, the platform. Very exciting. And of course, every new library, new, new area, new country, you get access to uh, new collections. And also it helps us really uh, leverage the technology of the system in terms of providing 24-7 uh, coverage. So the system does advanced load leveling, 
a time zone awareness for routing. And what we've seen over the past few months is that the actual turnaround time of the system overall has been reduced. I think Greg had it at uh, around 12 hours, maybe in this presentation. Over the past few months, it's been closer to about 10 hours. And in November, it was about 9.6 hours. Uh, so we're seeing that uh, turnaround time get even better. And I also want to talk a little bit about integrations. Uh, RapidL is unique in terms of how it in integrates with other uh, platforms. Uh, we support integrations, as uh, Greg mentioned, Rapido and Alma. We also have someone now that's using RapidLL through Koha. And of course, it's integrated with several other important ILL management platforms, uh, Clio, Iliad, Relay, and uh, Tipasa. Uh, we are also making other significant investments. Uh, this year, we've done a lot to scale support, uh, the implementation uh, process. We've done a number of developments to enhance the platform, including a lot around holdings, uh, copyright settings, and recently, we've added additional services, such as the Internet Archive. Uh, we ran a pilot with them earlier this year. They now are a lending member in Rapid. And as of yesterday, they just passed the 20,000 request mark. They've handled over 20,000 requests in Rapid. So I'm very excited about the future of Rapid LL to see continued growth. And uh, I think it's never been a better time to join the community. So if you're not a Rapid LL member and, and you're interested, uh, definitely reach out. So I wanted to start there, and I think to circle back to Rapido, um, I want to ask Judith a question and pull her into uh, the discussion. So Judith, um, when you join Rapido, are you only borrowing and lending with other Rapido members? Uh, what does that sort of network look like? Can you talk a bit about uh, the Rapido network? Yes, of course. So uh, one thing that I want to say uh, beforehand is that uh, we have four core uh, foundations in Rapido. One is the user experience, as uh, Greg showed you, the staff experience, efficiencies, etc. cetera. Um, future looking, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. And um, the fourth uh, pillar is openness and uh, something that we like to call um, the resource sharing ecosystem. So Rapido uh, borrowing requests can be filled by Rapido uh, members as well as known Rapido members. Uh, we have very advanced options to set your priorities for borrowing and lending beyond the Rapido scope. Uh, one of the questions that I was many times asked was when the first uh, Rapido customer went live, how could he have gone live if it was the only uh, customer using Rapido? Um, and uh, actually, the, the answer to this is that um, Rapido knows how to integrate uh, with any, any system that supports ISO and NSIP. Uh, it, of course, integrates uh, with Alma, uh, which also supports the standards. Uh, and it's really on our, um, one of our most important, uh, um, this is roadmaps, is to continue to support uh, the networks of your, of your library. We want to see you doing resource sharing with whomever you want to do resource sharing. Okay, excellent, thanks. Um, I've got a second question uh, for you. Can you talk about Rapido in relation to the world shared directory? What are the options for fulfilling requests not covered by Rapido pods or peer to peer defined in the system? Okay, I think it's kind of a connected uh, question and also Greg touched upon that a, a little bit. So first of all, um, we have a shared uh, directory that currently is supported by all of our uh, Alma institutions. And uh, we have uh, more than uh, 2,200 institutions already, maybe more as we speak. And uh, all of these are potential institutions uh, for uh, doing um, resource sharing, which is fantastic. So again, as, uh, as uh, Greg mentioned, anyone already on Alma, whoever is here in the audience and wants to be part of that directory, it's actually pretty, pretty easy. Um, it, it, it just makes your member available. Again, as, as we're saying, you of course need to communicate that uh, you want to start doing resource sharing, but in terms of defining the system, it's pretty, pretty much easy. And also, we also even have the option to add you to a pod and uh, work in a way similar to, to Rapido, not exactly as Rapido with the discovery, et cetera, but there is this option as well. Beyond that, as you know, we have Rapido as the backbone for document delivery. 
And we know that, that uh, of more than 90%, I don't, 95% of document delivery uh, requests are fulfilled by uh, Rapid, uh, via Rapido. And uh, again, with the time frame of uh, less than 24 hours, Mike, you probably know it's uh, around 12, the average is, is 12 hours. I don't know, but uh, the compromise is 24 hours. So um, with the directory and also uh, rapid, and uh, here I want to talk about the future and our future developments, which will enable you, even though you're not part of, um, you haven't downloaded that partner record through the directory to see who holds um, this resource, uh, really to make it uh, as much as easier as, as we can, so you can get your users the resources that they're looking for. And I really want to encourage you, if you're part of this uh, Alma community and you have more questions on this, if you want, uh, please reach out and we'll help you set you up and uh, give you all the information uh, required for this. But the resources are there, both in terms of the numbers of BIP records that we have in, in the system, in the higher ed platform, and also in, um, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the complete, as we like to say, Rapido is and uh, includes everything, uh, document delivery, returnables, and um, all of this community of users that are using different systems. Great, thanks Judith. Um, I think we'll go ahead and now move on to our third session. I mean, we could talk about the future of resource sharing uh, all day, uh, but I wanna talk about uh, one specific component of the future of resource sharing, and that is control digital lending. So I think Judith, you have a couple slides to share. Yes, and I hope I have the control. So again, uh, now we're talking about that future pillar, and I want to talk a little bit about control digital lending. Uh, now, not only uh, from the from the resource sharing perspective, but more in general. So a few slides just to um, I'll wait to see that my slide moves. Let's see, give it another chance. Okay, here we go. So every time I talk about uh, controlled digital lending, I like to start with this quotation, digital innovations are more of a human science than a computer science. I think that there's uh, probably you've heard, there's a lot of talk about CDL, um, there are various forum, forums. And actually one of the things that we've discovered while working on CDL, and we'll talk about what, what we mean really simplified is it's something very simple. It's kind of I don't really understand how we weren't there before. Maybe it's related to us and not to the possibilities of uh, the future of uh, uh, the digital innovations that we have. So let's um, talk a little bit just to make it, uh, you know, our base for our dialogue here. What is control uh, digital lending? So really, the the easiest way to look at this is that we want to take the physical copy that we have at the library and mimic uh, the restraints of this copy and make available a digital copy that the library has created for this. This means uh, concepts such as own to loan ratio. So it means that you can only circulate uh, the number, number of digital copies that uh, uh, you have uh, in the library. So if you have three uh, items in the library and you have a digital copy, it means that at the same time, you can only give three digital copies. And of course the circulating items are not circulating. So really, mimicking uh, the material as it, as it was physical. Uh, so um, including, of course, prevention of redistribution of this material to any other person or, or any similar thing. But the real, the, the, the question behind the CDL is why CDL? And I think the most basic um, statement here is that we, <laughs> is we need to let libraries do their uh, vital function to society. So that libraries are lending uh, books to users and uh, they need to give access to them. If they're not breaking copyright, uh, copyright rules, then they should be able to do this. And um, I think uh, the last two years uh, have been proof of this need. So I don't need to go into the COVID situation where this was uh, almost the only way for libraries to give uh, patron services. Uh, of course, we know already that uh, this is also a way to solve other issues such as uh, print disabilities um, and, and other type of uh, 
issues of this sort. There's the issue of the 20, uh, 20th century problem. You know that we have older books uh, that uh, cannot, will probably never be digitized. Um, and of course, uh, we want to make them available to our users. Um, coming from the resource sharing world, so I, of, of course, I will add this. Uh, some additional value to this is the quick lending turnaround. Again, the idea is not to um, uh, wrongly use the copy, but for example, if we think about uh, resource sharing, if you need to send a book and the book is not available during the shipment process until it's received, until it gets to the user, really, if we could make things easier without breaking any kind of rule, this would be uh, fantastic. There's a big movement of print conservation, so we know that there are collections that we don't want to be seen circulating, and this is really crucial to have the digital copy available, again, keeping the loan to own ratio. And um, ecological awareness, again, uh, why having to ship and send stuff uh, when you could provide it in a different way. And really, we're talking about very, very, very small numbers. We're not talking about uh, 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 big uh, numbers of copies. It's, uh, it's something that uh, is, uh, the scale of it is uh, really, really minor, but important, crucial. So uh, what are our focus areas? We're working on all of our uh, products. So uh, of course, uh, through uh, course resources and the Alma D, uh, we have uh, already, there's already functionality there that provides uh, short-term access to um, digital copies that you have with a patron wait list. Again, keeping the own-to-own -own ratio and not uh, in enabling um, various patrons to keep in a line, in a queue, so they can get the item. It's really interesting. You can read more about this in our uh, documentation. We're now working uh, on uh, general circulation for long terms, uh, for long term lending. And again, uh, a lot of, uh, in, uh, in, we're focusing on uh, that own to loan to own ratio and also to keeping mimicking the restrictions of the long term. So if the item can be loaned for 28 days, then this digital copy should lock the item and also um, uh, the item should be loaned for 28 days. Um, and in, in my world of uh, resource sharing in Rapido, uh, we're also uh, working on this development, again, keeping in synchronization all of the systems around you. So if, uh, if you're sharing a CDL copy that you have, through all of the rapid of functionalities, like a pod, where you're saying, I can, I have all of these items that have been CDL, I want to make them available, you can provide a CDL copy, but keep it, um, keep the item locked uh, for the period of, uh, of being um, shared. So um, this was really fast. Uh, last uh, two, uh, I think the last slide that I have is uh, that we have a CDL advisory group uh, many, many of our best features have been developed uh, with our community and uh, actually we're working uh, with a very strong team of uh, people that are helping us uh, see how this evolves. Greg is part of uh, our team here. Um, and uh, just to give you a little bit more information, we're divide we are a big group and we work together, but we also have subgroups that are dealing with different topics such as uh, copyrights, uh, circulation, resource sharing, each on, on their own area. So I think this was, uh, I believe this was my last slide uh, on CDL. And uh, Greg, since I have you here, maybe we can uh, engage in a little conversation. I wanted to ask you, um, how do you envision uh, CDL impacting the world of libraries? Sure. Um, I almost talked with with uh, my mute button turned back off, but didn't, thankfully. Um, I'm the king of that. First of all, it will make libraries better able to accommodate people with barriers to reading the printed page um, or even people walking into a physical library. So for accessibility reasons, it um, will have a big impact. Second, I think it'll be a, a good test run for a sharing of ebooks. Some libraries like ours have negotiated licenses, so we have the ability to share some of our ebooks. We don't really have a good way to do it. So I think a CDL could pave the way, so to speak. Um, third, it will allow us to circulate and consume books in different ways. Uh, uh, things we may not 
understand yet. I'm a music junkie, so purchase new LBs, LPs and cassettes and appreciate using the physical medium, but love how they come with the MP3 version and the streaming version if purchased through the Bandcamp platform. This is sort of analogous. Our users will be able to choose the mode of delivery while libraries can maintain a one-to-one loan-to-own ratio. So those are some ways I could see it impacting us. So from what I hear from you, uh, I was going to ask you, how do you see your CDL integrated into your institution? But actually, I think uh, you really see this happening. Are you already doing some work on CDL or? No, I am not, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, I think that we would look for low hanging fruit first, items that are waiting for mending, items needed for course reserves, maybe even highly circulated books. Um, not sure whether we could offer digitization on demand or not. And I know that's part of the CDL discussion um, is how you present yourself as a lender. I think there also be surprises that only occur to us after doing it for a while and, and working with colleagues. So for example, just on uh, Friday, I met with our university's new accommodation specialist about supporting a course with the Leganto resource uh, list. I found out that her department has a boneyard of around 300 physical books they've digitized for students with needs for accessibility accommodations in past courses. I told her about uh, CDL up and coming and asked if they would be willing to gift those bones to the libraries. Um, and then perhaps we could use those to seed uh, our CDL collection. And it sounds like we'll be able to make a deal. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Should we move to Q&A? Yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> Excellent. So we've had a number of questions come through. Uh, first question uh, for Greg. I lost it. Oh, here it is. How did Leganto remove barriers to reading and save you money? Yeah, so um, it saves students money, didn't necessarily save us money, but I guess the principle is um, a student has $60 in their pocket and they either will, will buy the textbook at the bookstore or um, maybe they'll buy a new pair of pants or something. Well, um, it's the urge sometimes is stronger to buy the new pair of pants than it is to buy the textbook. So um, if we're off, able to offer that uh, text or, or something in our Leganto reading list, which is free of charge, uh, no additional charge to the student from our library collections, or, or we even can go ahead when we see a faculty want something and try to purchase it uh, for use in the course, then um, the student will be able to engage with the content and they'll be able to do it while wearing their new pants. So, <laughs> so they'll, from going from having no likelihood of reading it because they've got the new pants um, to being able to do both, uh, you know, I think that, that easily being able to provide in, um, information sources and, and text and stuff like that for free is, is uh, something that's gonna lead to better engagement with materials. Excellent. So Judith, you answered this one in the chat, but I'm going to bring it back up because I think it's a, an important question. Is Rapido supposed to be in place of using Tipasa or other LL management platforms? Yeah, thank you. I really also wrote it pretty shortly. Um, so from, from the beginning, Rapido was built to replace all of your current existing resource sharing solutions. So Rapido is many, many things uh, at the same time as uh, also Greg mentioned it. So it's, it, it starts from discovery, bringing a lot of um, value to discovery itself, itself, and it ends up uh, being also uh, managing the boring requests created by the borrower with this experience, unified experience of, uh, for him, making it easier. And it also acts as a broker, uh, finding the right partner for you. So the, the, the quick answer, which is the answer I gave in the chat is yes, it is made to, to replace your, your systems. I must say that we, it really depends. We have other customers that are keeping their other uh, resource sharing tools. There's no, um, it can be done in parallel, but there's no need. 
And I will just use this time to say that uh, Rapido covers Rapid ILL. So when you buy Rapido, uh, the Rapid ILL uh, subscription is included there. So there's no, you're not paying for both systems. You're uh, paying for one. Okay, great. Uh, another one you answered, Rapid ILL can integrate with WorldShare. I think they mean uh, with uh, Tipasa. Uh, can Rapido integrate with uh, WorldShare as well? Yeah, okay, so that's a, a great, great question also. So um, we are just coming now at the, first of all, we've wanted to uh, integrate uh, with Walter for a very, very long time. And um, one of the complications, it was uh, the fact that uh, they, they didn't support uh, the standards. Uh, but I have to say here that we really want to work with whomever wants to work with us. It's uh, again, part of our openness uh, pillar. Uh, uh, to answer that specific question, we really want to give uh, our first step here is that the board does everything from the Rapido side. So they place their request as you saw what Greg uh, showed you. And if it's not found on the various different uh, ways to find uh, who, who has it, either to the Rapido pods, to peer-to-peer -peer connections or any other options that we have there, uh, will be able to set you will be able to set uh, Walter as your last resort. So it will be pushed at the end to Walter if you want to, if you have that, uh, uh, if you're continuing to pay to Walter. So that's happening at the beginning of this year, which is fantastic news for we're happy to have that integration. That's great. Okay, moving over to, to some CDL questions. I don't know the answer to this one, so I'm not sure if this is Greg or Judith, but uh, <laughs> how do you manage digital files that library, the library has created in response to patrons' requests for a digital copy? Do you keep digital files in AMD while linking to the print copies bibliographic record? Okay, so first of all, we're just now, that's the work that we're doing uh, with, the, with the advisory group. Uh, we are thinking about various topologies. Of course, one of the most basic topologies is having Almandi, and um, which is tightly connected to your inventory. So we can keep the relationship between the item and the inventory uh, uh, synchronized. So for, this is first and looking only at, at the circulation point of view of, uh, of things. So the item would be locked if you provide the CDL, et cetera, all of this functionality. The same when we talk about Rapido. So if uh, the Rapido is doing resource sharing and you have Almadi and you have, uh, uh, the, you can this you can keep you can use Almadi as your repository uh, for for this. We understand that there are many many other topologies, and we're working also with the advisory group to understand what are the needs of the community in general and uh, what we can provide. So we don't have all the minor details, but um, for sure, the integration with Almadi will be supported. We're thinking about other topologies that need to be supported as well. Excellent. Uh, the next two questions are related. Um, can CDL be used with other types of media other than books and print? What about videos, audiovisual files? So far, the emphasis in CDL has been on print. What about film, video? Are the institutions who are utilizing CDL to make digitized copies of their DVDs or old VHS available to patrons? So really the practice up until today mostly has been really focused on physical, but there is talk about other, as Greg, Greg was mentioning music, uh, et cetera. So um, I think we will see this evolving and um, there's a question up there on the copyrights and whether you can do this, you cannot do this. Um, again, I guess uh, for each uh, resource type, we'll need to give some thought uh, what we're doing here and if we can do it. Um, I like to say, uh, it's a phrase I like to say sometimes that uh, you do the lending, let's, let, let the institution let the, do the lending, let us, um, do the controlling uh, part of the CDL. So uh, we, we, this is part of our work with the copyrights uh, team to see exactly what we can do, when we can do it. Uh, from my understanding, and Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, the copyright team, our advisory group said that in terms of all of the, I don't know, all the statements, uh, you can do CDL quite uh, freely if you're really locking the item behind, uh, 
you're not circulating it and you're providing the copy to one person as you would do with uh, mimicking um, the behavior of the physical copy. And it seems that whatever we've read and all of the laws seems to support it. So it seems that that's fine. Okay. Another uh, CDL question, are there best practices when maintaining CDL copies? I'm concerned about interoperability and feature access when supporting software changes. Great question. CDL is a non-ending non uh, topic. Uh, I think that yeah. uh, <laughs> I think that in that sense, that's a good reason to um, to support the integration of uh, CDL with Armadi, which is uh, uh, created for this and for uh, um, you know keeping the copies available. So uh, um, I think that uh, it really. It will come to the details, but I think that, uh, yeah, the question of keeping the files, even though I think there might be for resource sharing, we might support other types of um, resource sharing where um, the file is kept by the institution somewhere. Uh, but again, this brings scope, this brings big questions about how to maintain those copies for the future. I think maybe one more CDL question. Uh, with Almadi, um, what kind of, I think the question is what kind of D DRM is involved? Uh, for instance, uh, prohibiting 100% printing of a loan. Okay, so currently uh, the current functionality in Almadi is online and you cannot download or uh, copy stuff. So uh, it's just there to view. Um, I think that uh, our first uh, move in, in, in this direction would be also to provide for long terms for long term this type of view. Still you can keep you can keep your view for as long as the loan period uh, is available. Uh, but really um, keeping it uh, closed in, in the world of Almandi and not going beyond it as today, as for your users today, just with the additions of the um, loan to own ratio and the addition of how long can this copy be kept uh, by the user that's using it, etc. Great. Uh, I want to jump in on a question uh, for us medical libraries. How about Doc Lane? Uh, so I'll answer that one. That's a great question. We get that question all the time. Uh, we would love to have integration with DocLine. We've talked with them many times over the years. I think they have some limited ability to uh, develop uh, DocLine to integrate with other systems. So when they're ready, we're, we're happy to do so. I will say that a lot of libraries that use DocLine and have joined Rapid have found that they could get the vast majority of their medical request field through Rapid LL. We have a lot of medical libraries, library around the world with different medical collections. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to have DocLine as part of the community at, at some point. Um, I think maybe for our last question, because we just have a couple minutes, there's a couple of questions around the pricing for Rapido and what is the return on that, uh, the Rapido investment? I'm wondering if we just want to kind of talk just a minute about that. Uh, I'm sure, Greg, if you want to uh, tackle the, the investment and return on investment and, and the benefits there. Sure. Um it's most evident to me in the capacity that staff has with reducing the amount of systems that we're managing, the, reducing the amount of different students that we have to train. Um, all that sort of stuff has been really, uh, we're way more efficient now, I guess I would say. Um, so there's a return on an investment there. Um, and then, you know, like, I don't know how you measure um, being able to turn around items. Uh, in you know 10 hours as opposed to two days but there's obviously some impact for our users there too okay excellent i think we're about at the top of the hour should we wrap it up okay i think so so uh from my side, thanks everyone for partic participating in uh, the webinar today. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Judith. Thank you, Sabrina. Thanks, uh, Israel Choice. And thanks everyone for, for joining us. Um, just a really nice discussion and, and it was nice to talk with all of you.
Thanks so much, Mike. Uh, this is Sabrina from Choice and ACRL. Thanks so much to Greg, Mike, and Judith for taking the time to present today. And thanks to our attendees for your questions and comments. Uh, really informative discussion. I'd like to remind our viewers that we did record today's program, so be on the lookout for a follow-up email from Choice and ACRL with a link to the recording. Uh, also, give you a few minutes after the presentation to fill out a brief survey. We really appreciate it. Uh, your responses help us improve our presentations. Uh, so thanks again to all of you out there for joining us. Uh, we hope you learned a little bit from the session, and we hope to see you again in the future on another webinar.